everyone, welcome to today's live feed. A few people asked why I designed my own cot mattresses, and I thought I'd just chat to you a tiny little bit about that today. Uh, one of the reasons was I was pregnant with my third baby, and lots of you might know that I had Nathan and I had lots of problems having keeping our babies inside long enough to take them home from hospital. I used to get pregnant very, very easily, but never carried my babies full term, which meant that my children were going to be premature. And when you have a premature baby, they are at a greater risk of SIDS. And also when you have a male baby, when you have a boy, there also seems to be an increased risk of SIDS. So taking those two factors into account, I desperately wanted my third baby boy, once he was born prematurely and came home from hospital to have the best start in life. And I was looking at cot mattresses and I was looking at the various cot mattresses on the market. And I, I at the time was selling a cot mattress for a standard size cot. They're running out the door. But when we went to the various factories and looked at the cot mattresses, what scared the bejesus out of Nathan and I was cigarette smoke. We knew that cigarette smoke played a big part in SIDS. We know that children who have passed away from SIDS have often come into contact with cigarette smoke. We also know that some babies who die in utero, who are born sleeping, have been exposed to cigarette smoke. So it plays a big factor. And when we went looking at these factories to make our own mattress, because we wanted to make different sized mattresses, and we wanted to make a decent mattress for the mini crib, I really, really, really wanted my new baby to sleep in the mini crib. At the time, we were living in a one room. We were living in a bedsit, which we were building a house. We were living in one big, big room, but there was Nathan, myself, Dara, Killian, and the new baby, and a dog. We were all going to be living in one basically big room, plus a kitchen, plus a bathroom. And I really wanted to use the mini crib, but I knew that I couldn't get a decent mattress for the mini crib. So we went on the mattress hunt, and we went looking for a factory and so on. And every time we found mattress factories that we were happy with, there would be people smoking cigarettes. And it drove us insane. And yes, they weren't smoking where they were making the mattresses, but they'd have the doors to the factories open. And this was in Australia as well, not just in China, in Australia as well. They'd have the doors to the factory open and you could just smell the cigarette smoke. And I'd think, so you're going to buy this mattress, you're going to put your tiny little newborn baby on it, and it's going to have been exposed to cigarette smoke. And they're going to be on this mattress for 12 hours at night. Yes, you will get them up and do night feeds. And they're also going to be on the mattress for a good two, two and a half hour sleeps during the day. Imagine, it's like we put more thought into our shoes and not enough thought into our children's beds. Anyway, so if you're pregnant or you know somebody that's pregnant, please, please tell them the mattress is really important. Uh, I know you can't really do this, but why don't you look at the mattress, make sure it's made in Australia, and then check out the factory it's made in. Check that there isn't people standing there smoking cigarettes. I know you probably can't do that. I had the luxury of being able to do that, but it is really important. Maybe ask the shop where you're getting your cot from, where the mattress comes from, and if they know if the factory has a no smoking policy around their cot mattresses. I think that that's really important. So if you're pregnant, having a baby, you're worried, you don't know where you're going to sleep your baby, stop worrying. Go to somewhere like IKEA. All cots sold in Australia have passed Australian safety standards. Don't sleep your new baby in a bassinet. Bassinets have not passed Australian safety standards. Go, and the same thing can apply. They can be made in a factory where it reeks of cigarette smoke. Go get yourself a cot. All cots have passed Australian safety standards. You can buy one in Target. You can buy one in Kmart. You can buy one in IKEA. Put the money into the mattress. Lots of cots come with a free mattress. So it's like cot mattress included. The mattress is free. You're paying for the cot. You're not paying for the mattress. The mattress costs $5 to make. Our mattresses don't. Our mattress manufacturer thinks that we're crazy because we pay a fortune for the mattresses. And we basically, by the time we ship it out to you because we charge $10 shipping, it's, we've made no profit. But I'm not about making profit on the mattress. I know that you'll come to me for your bedding and your blankets, your sheets. And I'm about keeping babies safe. So the mattress guy thinks we're crazy because our mattress has cost a fortune to make and we can make a mattress for $20, $30. Some of the mattresses that come from China cost $5 to make and then they get them free with your cot. So what happens if you get a mattress free with your cot and now you're going to buy a decent mattress? Don't worry. 
you will find at some point during the, your child's time on their cot mattress, they will get a vomiting bug. They will vomit or they will wet through their nappy and you'll want to pull the mattress out, sponge wash it, leave it somewhere to dry and you can use a backup mattress for one night. It's not going to do your baby any harm to sleep on a mattress that's not as good quality for one night. So remember, the cot, get a cot with slats the whole way around and the cot is not as important as the mattress. The, mat the cot passes safety standards of bought in Australia. It's the mattress that you need to put your thought into. So don't worry that much about the cot. Worry heaps about the mattress. That's my tip. It has to be firm, etc. So why do we make our own mattress? Because I wanted a mattress to fit in the mini crib so I could sleep my baby in the mini crib. I wanted one that was made in Australia where I could go to the factory and inspect the factory. I didn't want it to be flat packed on the way into Australia and I didn't want to risk it coming in a shipping container with wood and then getting sprayed with fumes to fumigate. I also didn't want one that was made for the US market or the market, European market because they get sprayed with fire retardants and all furniture does over there and I didn't want to risk that happening. I didn't want my baby sleeping on a mattress that had been sprayed. Right. I'm going to move on from mattresses. I'm going to take a couple of questions in a minute. I think I just fell in love. Look at this. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? I walked in here. It's down the back. We've got a baby shower section. And it was down the back in the baby shower section. And he's asleep. And he comes with a knitted blanket. It's one. The same people who make my Save Our Sleep blankets make these. Someone's put a love heart up. If anyone else loves it, put a love heart up. The same people, so the little linen company make Wigro Amigo, they make my blankets, they make these. These are gorgeous. It's a beautiful knitted blanket. And I don't know if you can buy him separately. I don't think you can. So if you know anyone having a baby, that is, a, and they've got a few different designs. I don't know where the other ones are. But that's a gorgeous baby gift. Gorgeous. I had to share it. I need another baby. Unfortunately, I'm not able to have any more children. But I'm desperate. For, I'd love to have another baby. So if anybody would like to give me their baby. No, I am joking. But if I had another baby, I'd be buying them one of these. Now, let me see what questions have come in. Let me see. I'm just going to check. I'm looking down at my phone, which I know always seems slightly rude. But I just want to check what, the, what questions have come in. So bear with me a second while I find your questions. My phone is playing up. Right, let me try to get to the top. Come on, telephone work. Right, Lauren says, Hi Tizzy, is your youngest in a cot or a big bed? Interesting question, Lauren. My little guy is still in a cot. And he doesn't want to move for big bed. And he's going to be three on Saturday. I say move boys to a bed when they are three. I haven't even bought a bed for him yet. I'm trying to decide whether to put him in a bed in Killian's room. So we've got Killian's room and then you've got Kieran's room. And there's a bathroom in the centre with a walkway. Like so they, a door opens from Killian's room and the door opens from Kieran's room. And there's a bathroom corridor. So... The rooms are kind of adjoined, so I'm trying to work out whether to put him in to the bed in Killian's room, and then if he gets out of bed, I'm going to put him back in the cot. I don't know when I'm going to move him. He actually starts school on Tuesday. People find it a bit strange when I say he starts school. So he turns three on Saturday, and he starts school on Tuesday. That means he's going to wear a school uniform, and he's going to go to kinder three. It's a pre-kinder at the school that my big boys go to in the UK, we call it school. They wear a school uniform, they wear a school hat, they carry a school bag, it's all on the same area. We call it school. Over here, I think you call it pre-kinder or kinder, but it, in the UK, we call it nursery or school, and they go five days a week. He's only going to go three days a week, but so he's getting very big, but he's still in a cot. So he's going to be going to school, as in from next Tuesday, and he's still sleeping in a cot, yes. And I don't know when I'm going to move him. We'll see. But if he's happy there, why change it? And if I can keep my baby longer. But I would never take the cot side off. I'm lucky because I've got lots of cots with the sleep clinic downstairs. I'm lucky I could, I could take the cot side off and I could put another cot in his bedroom, but I wouldn't do that. So I say move them to a big bed at three for a boy, two and a half for a girl. And if they get out of the big bed, you put them back in their cot. Okay. Sarah says, 
Oh, by the way, if anyone's got any advice for me as to when I should move him from a cot to a bed, feel free to give it to me. Sarah says, Hi, Tizzy. My 15-week-old is a serial catnapper. Sleeps 9.20 to 11. I wake... How can you have a serial catnapper if they're sleeping 9.20 to 11? Okay, let me read on. And 1.20 to 4.15. I've ruled out hunger with top-up feeds, including express breast milk, singlet, one tog, wrap, layers, bamboo, cotton towels, bassinet, mattress protector, and heater, wakes at the 30-minute mark every sleep recently. I can see her trying to resettle. Okay. So you, your baby isn't sleeping, for, obviously, from 9.20 to 11 and is catnapping. With catnapping, we look at hunger. Obviously, 15 weeks. Well, 15 weeks, you won't have started solids. So I would say that your little one is getting ready to start solids. And at 16 weeks, you'll start solids. And that should help with the catnapping. So we would look at hunger. We would look at, is your baby sucking on a dummy to go to sleep? And we would look at, is your baby... Uh, warm enough it looks like you've got all of that sort of covered the first thing i would try is a 9 30 sleep time and a 1 30 sleep time and see if that helps but as i said it could just be sarah that she's waiting for solids so if you could just try the solids next week and then let us know in a couple of weeks how it's going after you try the solids somebody's asked about white noise uh what do I think of white noise? Well, as stated in the book, I don't think you should use white noise or music because if you use white noise or music, then that becomes an aid. And then if you ever want to go away on holidays, or you want to go in an airplane or somewhere, you're not going to have that noise to help your child sleep. I don't think we should teach our children to rely on something to go asleep. I think you put them to bed and they should just hear the natural noise around the house, etc. So no, I'm not a big believer in white noise or music etc to get your child to sleep because of course if they wake up between sleep cycles they're going to need the white noise again to get back to sleep uh, sam says what do i do if my baby is cold in melbourne with 15 blankets and the room's 21 degrees sam if your room is 21 degrees and you're using 15 blankets in melbourne i do not think your baby is cold i'm not sure what time your baby is, or I'm not sure what your baby's eating, or you haven't said what age your baby is, but uh, if he wakes at 2 and at 5.30, look, it's got to be something else. I'd be looking at hunger. Is your baby on stage 1 or stage 2 infant formula? Is your baby breastfed? Are you on the mini pill? Are you taking probiotics? If your baby is having food, are you giving them puree? Are you making them eat all of that before you give them food off the family table? I really don't think it is coldness that's waking your baby up if you're using that many blankets. Uh, Sarah says I can have her baby. Well, I'd love your baby H to come down and stay with us, Sarah. I, I've been keeping an eye on you on the online advice area, and if it continues to... Not, I, mean, I think it is getting better. Last time I checked, you were getting better. But remember, you can, it's Kieran's birthday this weekend if you want to come down for a party. Remember that... If it does get too much, you are welcome to come down and stay for a weekend. Sarah's a friend of mine, by the way. Someone says, hi, Tizzy. Would love some tips on camping with a 13-month-old. Camping in Jemison, Victoria, and it's going to be freezing. She normally sleeps in a room of 21 degrees. That's not really something that I can help with on a live feed. If you're going camping, I always go to a... We used to camp in... We camp in summer, but I wouldn't camp in winter without a heater. I think it would get very cold. I'm not sure how you would manage in Victoria without a heater. And if you were to use a heater, you'd have to use an electric one, etc. It's not something I can go into in the live feed, sorry. I think you're very brave if you're going camping where there's no heating. Wouldn't it be freezing and snowing in Jemison in Victoria at the moment? Anyway, I'm sorry, I cannot help with that individual question on the live feed. Victoria says, hi Tizzy, my 14 month old hasn't settled under her blankets for five months and ends up on her side or tummy. I roll her over She's in PJ's 2.5 bag sheet, 12 little linen blankets. Okay, so if she's still rolling to her side with 12, you need to put two, roll her back and try the 15. I really think that will make a difference. Please, can you try that, Victoria? And let us know how you go. The room should be 20, not 22. Let us know how you go. Uh, I'm going to take one more question. Sam says, oh, it's Sam talking about her baby from earlier. Sam says, he's six months old and been on solids for two months. I'm following the guide. 
bedding guide, including the wrap and a wrap cotton towel. He was sleeping through from eight weeks, but suddenly started waking. He's on AR formula, but is barely eating it since starting solids. I would be looking at changing formula. If he's on an AR formula, I think that could be what the problem is. I think your little one's hungry. I would be looking at changing the formula. See if you can try the A2 formula. I'd be putting as much formula as you can into his solids. I'd be adding rice milk and brown rice into his solids and really trying to get his food intake up. Okay, I'm going to have to leave it there because I've got to go and pick Kieran up from daycare in a little bit. And it's his last day, which is kind of quite sad, really. But very exciting that he's moving on and growing up. So I will do another feed again tomorrow afternoon. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.